Okay, I want to look at linear regression and residuals. So come to our Schoology page and click on this folder and you need to download this zip file. A zip file is a way to compress a whole bunch of files into one for easy sharing. So once you've downloaded it, you need to actually go click on the zip file to unpack it. Okay, so it extracted all of those files into a folder called datasets. So open that folder and make sure that you see all of these CSV files here. Once you see all of those, go to Google Drive and we're going to upload them. We'll just do one at a time. So the easiest one to start with is probably tree growth here from chapter 10. And we upload that right there. And uh, make sure after you upload it, it says converted. If you don't have converted right there, go to settings, upload settings, and make sure that this one is checked right here. We want to convert it to the Google Docs format. So once you got that, click on this, and here's our data table. Now you'll notice it's kind of tight. I want a little more room to breathe and work. So I'm going to add some more rows at the bottom. And I'm going to select a cell at the right and insert a bunch of columns to the right. Now I've got room to work, room to breathe. Okay. So the next thing you need to do for all of these data sets is you need to look at the variables you've been given and you need to look at the file name and we need to try to infer some sort of context here okay so we're talking about tree growth in this situation and I've been given the age of a tree in years and the diameter in inches so that means that somebody who collected these data went and they measured a tree somehow they knew it was eight years old maybe counting rings and they knew that the diameter is 6.2 inches okay so what I want to do is I want to identify an explanatory and response variable or an x and y variable in my scatter plot. Now, to me it makes a lot of sense for the x variable to be age, and I'm going to copy and paste it over to the side here. And I'm going to copy and paste diameter as the explanatory or excuse me, the response variable or the y variable in my scatter plot. Now, we could have done this the other way around. We could have done diameter and then age for x and y respectively. And that might make some sense to try to predict the age of a tree based on its diameter. But I chose this way. Now, you need to do this for any of the data sets you're going to look at. Um, a lot of them have more than one variable in here. So you need to choose an explanatory and a response. Just choose two from what you've been given that makes sense to look at, to make some sort of meaningful predictions. Now, we make those predictions with the regression line. Okay, so I need to do a linear regression. Now, a linear regression means I need a line. And if I want a line, I need a slope and a y-intercept. And so I've just stuck these, this M and B right here to keep track of what the numbers I'm going to end up with right here me. So how do I calculate a slope from these data? Google Docs is going to do all the math for me. It's pretty nice. So I'm going to select this cell here and type equals and the word slope. Okay. Now look at what it's asking for. It says I'll calculate the slope but give me the y values first and then the x values. Okay. So I need to come in here and select my y values, put a comma, and then select my x values. And just like that it calculated the slope for me. Now for the y-intercept I need to do equals intercept. It's that easy. Thank you technology. So y values, x values again. Select the y values, comma, oops, x values. I've got a slope and a y-intercept. Now that's because a line is y equals mx plus b. Okay, so what does that mean for me here? How am I going to use this? So in this cell right here where all of my predicted values are going, I'm going to say that this is equal to m, which is in this cell, d14, times x, well the x value I want is right here, that's the first x value, plus b. There's b. So I do that and wow, it found the value for me. How nice. Well, the beauty of a spreadsheet is that if I drag this down now, it's going to drag through all of these x values and it's going to apply the same equation again. But you'll see, if I just drag it as is, there's a little problem. Okay? The problem is that, gosh, this does not look linear. I've got a bunch of zeros. Something funny happened. So we need to investigate. Um, here's my equation right here. That looks good. But if I move down a cell, 
I noticed that it switched to D15 and D16. It also switched to F3, which is this new X value right here, but what's D15 and D16? Here's D15 and D16. Ah, so when I drag this down right here, it actually is looking at all of these cells down here too. I need to tell this spreadsheet application to hold these values fixed when I drag. So what I want to do, I'm going to delete this stuff. I'm going to come back to here and I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the 14 and in front of the 15. Now what that's going to do is it's going to hold these values fixed as I drag down. If I wanted to really fix them, I could put dollar signs in front of the D's too, but we'll talk about that another day. So now, if I drag this down, I should get something that looks a little better. Okay, so if I click on this right here, um, let's look at the equation. It says D14 times F5. Well, here's F5, so that looks good. And plus D15, there's D14 and 15. So everything looks good. I am using my M and my B to calculate all of these predicted values. Now, some people get kind of stressed out when they see all these numbers in their face right here. It's a little bit um, overwhelming to look at. You can make this prettier by coming down here and let's round it to two decimals. Now that looks pretty good. And um, the nice thing is it's not actually rounding it. it in the background. It's going to still do the math with the full precision of these numbers. So we don't have to worry about round off error or anything like that. But let's go ahead and look at the scatter plot now. Okay, so I'm going to switch this back to regression. You can name this various things. You could name it if you want. It's actually not a bad idea to call this y equals 0.46x plus 1.97. Okay, that's the equation for all of these points right here. Now, if I make a scatter plot, Let's see how cool this is. There we go. Okay. That's a pretty good looking chart. And um, I should title it. Let's call it tree growth. Now, our titles might not always be the same as the uh, file name here. So um, just be careful what you choose your, your chart titles to be. The horizontal axis, my explanatory variable was age and years. And um, the response variable was diameter in inches. Okay. So now let's talk about what we're looking at. The blue data right here comes from my original scatter plot. This is from this is from this information right here. Those are the blue points. Now these are the x values and those are the y values. So really the blue points can be thought of as the, the diameters. Now I've got predicted diameters right here from my regression equation plotted in red. And you'll notice that the red dots are all in a nice perfectly straight line. The blue dots are a little bit wavy. Now if we want to understand more about this wave in the data right here, we should look at residuals. Okay, So remember that a residual is equal to the observed value minus the predicted. Okay, So somebody came through this forest or whatever, and they observed a bunch of trees. They observed that the diameter of this six-year-old tree was 5.2. Now, when we made a regression equation, we predicted that a six-year-old tree should have a diameter of 4.75 inches. Okay. If I want to know the residuals over here, I need to say that this cell is equal to my observed value minus the predicted value. Okay. And if I drag it down, it's going to calculate residuals for all of those. And if the long decimals are stressing me out, I can round it. Okay. Now I want to look at a scatter plot of this information. But if I want a scatter plot, that means I need x and y values. Okay. So there are a couple of ways to do this. We could choose um, the original y values to be our new x values in the residual plot or we could just stick with the x values. I'm just going to stick with the x values right here. Okay, so I've got my age plotted against the residuals. So now what we can look at is a scatter plot of the residuals. This is known as a residual plot. Let's talk about what it's going to show us. Okay, if you notice, 
in the original plot, the blue data kind of has a wave to it, right? It goes above and then drops down and below. And right here, um, right around 12 years, I think, the predicted and observed values were relatively close, okay? So if we look at these data right here, so at 12 years, the observed was 7.6, the predicted was 7.53. Well, if I come back to my residual plot, why is it getting kind of crowded in here? Oh, give me a break. There we go. Okay, if I come back to my residual plot, and I look at this point right here, okay, it's really close to zero because the difference between the diam the observed and the predicted is small. The, res the residual is small for this point right here. Now, it's showing, it's exaggerating the wave that we see in these data down here. And that's the point of making a residual plot. We are looking at any nonlinearity of our original data. And it's telling us, you know, whether or not a linear model was appropriate. Oh, I don't know what's up with this, but it's kind of bothering me. Anyways, I hope that this gets you started with plotting residuals, regression lines, etc. in Google Drive.